Are you okay? Is something wrong? Or can I help you? Those were the words that I desperately wanted to hear right before I catapulted myself over the rail. I have now lived 15 years past the day I should have died. When you see a lot of mental illness being expressed, that's a clue that the culture is sick, not the person. Hey, brother. Hello, Kevin. You were the first person to ever say, you know, Kevin, you should talk about this. Our guest, Kevin Hines, plummeted 200 feet but survived. Today, I travel the globe spreading a message of hope. Why? Because we know it helps people heal. There's a huge opportunity as we talk about stories of survival to support people who are out there who are in pain. I break down on a regular basis. I have symptoms every day. Um, I still have hallucinations, both auditory and visual. Families of those who jumped from the iconic structure urged to stop the suicides. One person goes to this bridge to die every seven to ten days. I think it's our obligation to stop it. You go to Paris, go to New York, you go to Istanbul, there are suicide barriers. The more people that know about the horror of that bridge, the more pressure will be put to do something to stop it. Will this really decrease suicides, you think? They say things like, why ruin the aesthetics? What, what are the aesthetics of a bridge compared to one human life? Kevin Hines, there's no telling how many lives were saved by you because you weren't able to take your own. Let's get to that place that nobody is being brave who talks about their brain disease. They're just being honest. My name is Kevin Hines, and this is my story.